over the past number of years, our work has been to illuminate the process of transformation. Many years ago, we were dealing primarily with the awakening, the presentation of the issues that had to be negotiated, how to do it, dealing with the issue of ego death, dealing finally with the issue of rebirth. Now we look at outcomes. The eagle is the final symbol of the process of transformation after the new birth. The eagle in its freedom, the freedom to fly. Freedom is what you have all been searching for. Freedom has been only a word, only a concept for humanity over the many years of human history. It has never been found. It has always been a distant, half-understood goal. It has often been abused. How many abuses have taken place in the name of freedom? Tonight I want to talk about achieving personal freedom. This is what you have been waiting for, working for, developing your faith, forgiving yourself, releasing your fears, going through hell to reach heaven, to reach the light. And the light is freedom. With freedom, you find joy. With freedom, you find your personal power. Freedom is the outcome. But what is freedom? What does freedom mean in your everyday life? You're going to be defining freedom over the remaining years of this incarnation. Defining freedom as it applies to you. It has always, or generally, been freedom from freedom from persecution, freedom from the actions of others that might bring harm. Freedom has been thought of as an escape. Freedom is an active, positive concept, in fact. When I say to you, you can become completely, personally free, well, what does that mean? In the past, when you were dealing, all humanity was dealing with fear issues, blocked and blinded by fears of various sorts, by enslavement to others, to society, political enslavement, enslavement to the attitudes of others, enslavement due to your own lack of self-belief, Enslavement due to your giving away the power that is rightfully yours as a being that is a being of God. Freedom can be abused. If you take freedom to mean that you can do any damn thing you want, you're right. You're right. But you who have achieved freedom through your process, through your faithfulness, through your dealing with the pain of confronting your issues, you can be trusted to be free. You can indeed do anything you want because you would never choose to do anything that would bring harm to others. It simply would not be possible for you. There would be no freedom in it, no joy in it, no empowerment in it. You are now incapable, incapable of abusing the rights of others. 
Now, I say the rights of others. Uh, to distinguish that from the desires of others or the neurotic needs of others. You must choose as your path continues. What is freedom for me? What freedoms can I take? Where would the line be? Well, I'll tell you. You can take any freedom you want, any choice that you desire. I've said that this time now is a time of dreams come true. Not by magic, not by snapping a finger or waving a wand, but because you have freed yourself and therefore your personal power, because you have freed yourself and therefore you have freed yourself from guilt, because you have freed yourself, you are now capable of reaching for your particular moon and grasping it. You have been enslaved in so many different ways. Well, this is the same life that you were born into as a slave. To be a slave for many years in your lifetime, becomes it becomes very difficult to redefine yourself as not a slave, not a servant, not a creature of others, but your own creature. Now, it's been seen many times when slaves have been set free. They choose to live their slavery, despite their theoretical right to be free individuals, because it is safer for them, because they have had no experience in being free, because they are used to being taken care of. The prospect of freedom is a frightening prospect for those unprepared for the implications of freedom, the implications of taking responsibility for yourself and for your life, the implication of being bold on your own behalf making daring choices, courageous choices. The freedom of redefining yourself in midlife. It's a great adventure because there is no downside. This is something I want to emphasize and re-emphasize. I'm not saying that life is easy now. There's all sorts of stresses going on. You're living in a world that is cracking apart due to the dichotomy of darkness and light, of fear and love, a world that is fracturing itself. You are not ignorant of that. You must live in it, though you are not of it. You have the stresses that accompany birth. A baby's life is very stressful. It's why they cry so much, because of the sense of the inability to understand where you are, what you can do, and how to do it. You are like a fresh-born baby. A clean slate, though memories hang over from the past. But they are only memories, only ghosts, that cling to you briefly until you brush them away. You must prove that to yourself, and you'll have to prove it to yourself again and again in the beginning, because you'll prove it and then you'll forget. Well, I'm just a little... No, wait, I'm not little. I'm not little. I'm not weak. I'm strong, and I'm going to prove that I'm strong. And you do just say, hey, I, I was right, I'm strong. But then the memory slips away again, and a familiar situation comes up, and you say, oh, I'm scared of this. No, I'm not scared of anything. So there is a process of leaving that old self to shrivel up and blow away as you redesign the new self. And in that process, you define freedom. Now, in this life alone, let alone karma, let alone the hangovers uh, from past lives, in this life alone, you have not experienced freedom. Uh, your parents, uh, one or both of them, have had de very definite ideas as to who they want you to be and how you can become that person and very often, those ideas will continue well into your adulthood. 
on both sides, the parents feeling that uh, they are free to direct and to criticize and, uh, and to point you in what they consider to be the right direction. And on the other side, uh, you, who are either rebellious in reaction to that, obedient in reaction to that, or guilty because you are not following in some respect or another what mother or dad would have wanted you or do want you to do. You go to school. Are you free to choose what you study? Are you free to choose your classroom, your teacher, your fellow classmates? No, you have no freedom there. Are you free when you enter the working world? By and large, no, even if you work for yourself. You're a slave to your clients. You are responding to what they want, to what the boss wants. Not necessarily what you want. Now, there are varying degrees of slavery. Just as there were slaveholders who were kind and relatively considerate to their slaves and others who were cruel and demanding. But slavery is slavery. With this tradition behind you, you come out blinking from that new womb and say, well, now how do I go about making my dreams come true, becoming the person that I have the potential to become? Well, I say to you very frankly and very honestly, part of the way you do it is by offending a lot of people. <laughs> some of them living and some uh, where the offense uh, is only in your mind to those who have already passed on. So you need to be courageous in making your choices and making them with the intuitive knowledge. It may not always be clear to the ego mind, always the last to uh, be uh, fully aware of what's going on. But out of intuition, you make your choices and you feel this choice is right for me. It feels right and I'm going to go ahead with it. Well, it doesn't have anything to do with what mom and dad wanted. It may not have much to do with what husband or wife wanted. It may uh, involve your leaving your boss or your school or whatever your situation is in order to redesign life to fit you. Now, does that sound terribly selfish? It certainly could be. It certainly could be. You could be defiant and angry and demanding in making these changes, but you won't be. And that's the wonderful point of this. You will not abuse others as you choose for yourself. Others may feel abused. People uh, are often, uh, often feel abused if their wishes aren't followed, particularly if there's a tradition of having uh, followed their wishes. They say, well, what's the matter with you? The matter with me is that I am free. The choices that you make, while they may offend others in your life, will not harm others. And that's what I said regarding rights. You will not trample the rights of others. You may often stamp upon the desires and wishes and commands of others. To thine own self be true. Know thyself. This is the process that you are engaged in. To discover who you truly are now that you've emerged from the dark woods and to be true to that emerging person. This doesn't have to be done in a weekend or a week, or a month, or a year. It is a lifetime process. And it will take a little nibbling here and a little nibbling there. Some of you will dive in and some of you will tiptoe in until you get used to the water, depending upon your own nature. And there's no rush. There's no time limit. It's not a race. It is an emerging into yourself, which means an emerging into wholeness which means an emerging into the oneness that is God and that will be reflected in all of humanity as this new age dawns and develops. 
as I've said many times, you are the pioneers. You are going to be discovering how to build a new age on different principles than those that ran the old age. In order for humanity to come together in wholeness, in sharing, on a psychic spiritual level, as well as in cooperation on other levels, not only are others going to have to go through the same process of death and rebirth that you are, which many will, um, but there is going to have to be first the sense, the awareness, and the reality of personal freedom. If you are not free yourself, you cannot become a viable part of this greater organism called humanity. You are not going to become ants in an anthill. Ants have no free will. Ants do not choose their jobs and their work hours and their way of life. There has been expressed that sort of fear when one talks about uh, the, uh, the fact that we're moving into a time of we rather than a time of me. But it's an enhanced we that contains all of the me's without having to melt away the me's. It is an enlightened me. It is an enlightened me that recognizes that you are a part of me and that I am a part of you. And together we make we, but we don't lose anything. We are enhanced, rather. And you've seen, uh, you've had examples in your lives, perhaps, of, of that uh, in, in love affairs, where they were real and sharing, and, and you recognized that the two of you together were greater than the sum of the parts of each of you separately. So will it be in much larger terms as this age matures. But this is just the beginning. It's still the ending of the old and the beginning of the new. So you will be creating your own definitions and you will be finding your own way, often blindly, but guided by an increasingly sharp, bright, inner light. As you get used to acting according to your intuitive wisdom, the talent and the awareness of the spirit, rather than be, being locked into ego choices alone, you will find that life becomes much easier. You will find that you can indeed trust yourself implicitly, that it's not simply a, a concept, but a fact. Does this mean that from this day forward, you will make no mistakes? You will not accidentally cause someone pain? Of course it doesn't. Does the child fall down before it learns to walk? Does the child mess its diapers before it learns that control? Well, so will you, as you learn to be fully human. I, I, I mention this because uh, the last thing uh, I want, or the last thing you would want, is to be hard on yourself. You must be gentle as the parent is with the child because you are now both parent and child having, having taken full responsibility for your life. So your own guidance of this new child is the guidance of the parent, which is also you. Again, there's an enhanced you that may involve friends, sometimes family, if those uh, have also gone through this process of awakening and awareness. The life that, uh, that is uh, now set before you is full of many opportunities, many ways to express all that you have come into this world to express. You are very unlikely to become a Renaissance human being able to do everything, including leaping tall buildings in a single bound. That isn't part of it. You are here to be individuals. As every cell in every body has its own job to do, so will you in this life and in the lives to follow. You will not be an island complete unto yourself, but you will be an archipelago united under the surface of the sea. 
retaining your individuality but grounded in your mutuality. You may be free to make all of the choices that you have set aside and thought yourself incapable of and thought, well, so-and-so wouldn't like this. You're going to invent, it'll seem like inventing, but really you're only touching universal knowledge, you're going to invent your own morality, your own ethics. You're going to be able to trust yourself to make those choices. I say, sure, accidentally you're going to step on toes. Accidentally you're going to invade other people's space and privacy. But never intentionally and never because of ill feeling. Any time you do, you will learn from it and you will grow more perfect in your understanding of yourself and your place in the world. This, I almost said this is automatic. Well, it's not quite automatic because you are uh, uh, being guided and guiding yourself in the course of this process, but you have earned the status. It is through your own efforts and your own willingness that you have gone through the valley of the shadow of fear and come out into the light, that you've gone through the death and the rebirth process. And now you are truly free. Exercise your freedom in every way. And it's going to be a very interesting process as you decide what do I truly want as opposed to what I think I want. What do I truly want as opposed to what many who love me think they want for me? What is going to be truly good for me and what is just a hangover of an ego memory desire? What is real and what is false? I say an interesting process. It's not going to be a frustrating process, not really. It is a process of learning to listen to your own inner voice. In the beginning, it's faith that fuels the whole process because the conscious mind is not really aware, not able to quantify, not able to understand in its limitation of rationality what is going on on a much deeper level. And so you say, in faith, I move forward blindly. But now, body, mind, spirit are blending into one and guided by spirit. Because, of course, it's the spiritual universe. That's the true reality. The flesh uh, uh, wrinkles and sheds uh, uh, after, uh, after a few years. The mind goes the way of the flesh. The spirit is eternal. And now that through your process you have invited the spirit to fill you, to reanimate you, the spirit as it enters body and mind creates major changes in the process of unification. And therefore, you're not going to have to live by blind faith in the same way that you have before. You're still going to live on, uh, by faith, but more and more you're going to become aware of the process that leads to your choices, your actions, and your words. That it emanates from the spirit, the still, small voice. But that voice, as it unites with your overconsciousness, with your, uh, with your ego consciousness, as that voice unites with ego, then there is conscious awareness. And your intuition, now I've said to you, how, when you say, well, how do I know when it's my intuition? I say, plunge ahead, take action. Well, what if I take action on everything and only part of it is my intuition? You won't. You'll only take action based upon your intuition. But you won't know that in your brain. You have to trust that. That's faith. But as you continue to do that, like any organ, muscle, what have you, that gets used and exercised, it grows stronger. The integration of the three elements of, of, uh, of the human self becomes more perfect, more complete, and clearer. Gradually, and in this lifetime, you will come to a point where you will be able to make 
decisions of whatever weight instantly because you will know and you will know that you know so there won't be the pacing and the thinking and the interference and saying, well I think I should do this but well I don't know you won't have to go through that process but in order to get to that immediate clarity of understanding you need to spend some time exercising exercising your will exercising your intuition guided will and this is an active process this is not a passive process because you're going to come into with cooperation with God with the universe you're going to come into challenges that demand exactly these kind of intuition guided decisions where you will feel blind and you say I don't know what to do I don't know what to choose what do you want well, I'm not sure. I think I want this, but I, I might not. And what if that's wrong? You know, what if I make a mistake? Arbitrarily say yes or arbitrarily say no and trust that arbitrary response as being the first sign of the intuition linked with the will and the ego. Because it's not going to stay that way for long. Because every time you get confirmation, you open that connection wider and make it more immediate and clearer to you. You say, oh, that's how it works. And then you forget. You say, oh, dear, here I am stuck again. Well, it worked last time for me to just go ahead and choose. All right, I take that one. All right, I'll do that. And you do it. And you think, oh, boy, I hope I was right that time. And, and you go ahead and they say, oh, well, that worked too. <laughs> And the next time it comes up, that hesitation will be less. Say, well, this really does seem to work, so I'll go ahead. And it works. And it continues to work. And gradually, that connection of heart and mind, of spirit and ego, becomes big enough that there's a free flow. And you recognize the, at first, very subtle feeling that you get when it is intuition, when it is the wisdom of the Spirit, when that is the basis of your response and your inclination. By doing it and doing it and doing it, what was initially subtle to the point where you didn't see it at all becomes recognizable. And you say, ah, oh, that's that feeling, and I recognize that feeling. That's the feeling I have when I do know for sure. And you stop second-guessing yourself gradually. And I emphasize that, of course, because you're all impatient. You're the monkey part of you wants everything done right away. It wants to see everything accomplished right away. It wants to do everything right away. Be patient with yourself. The monkey falls out of the tree. The banana's too far away, and he slips. <laughs> Does he quit? No, he just looks embarrassed and reaches for a closer banana. Or reaches a little farther for the original banana. That is a part of you. That's the earth part. The animal part, the material part. Limited in its years but vital in its cooperation with spirit. This whole process, the process of unification of what has been separate. God is not separate from anything. It's when you enter into human life and when you began entering into human life back in prehistory that you take on the characteristics of the animal. And because you have voluntarily given up the light, you are the animal in the dark, frightened, defensive, aggressive, survival only on your mind. But you've gone through so many lives where survival was the primary goal, that that is your instinct. Not what do I want most, but what will allow me to survive while losing least. Your goals have been very small, by and large. There are always human beings in every 
uh, uh, time in history who reach. And some of them attain, and most of them fall on their face. But that's the gradual evolution of the soul. And even in your uh, great soul development of many lives experience, you'll, uh, you don't do this in historical order. It's not like a freight train. You choose lives based upon what you need to learn. And so you may be in the 16th century in one life, and you may be in prehistory in another life, and in the 20th century uh, in a third life. But as your spirituality and your understanding grows, as you mature as a spirit, you begin to find the balance that takes the animal frightened, defensive, aggressive, and integrates that powerful energy. It's been misused for the point of survival. But it's a wonderful, vital energy, the animal in you, that which springs from earth. And as you unite that animal self with the purity of understanding of the spirit and the brightness and curiosity of the mind, you're able to do great things. And that's what you're doing now. You're becoming a new race. You're not uh, homo sapiens. I've said this uh, many times. You're no longer homo sapiens. The time of the freedom of the mind, the development of the mind, which is what homo sapiens were all about, is over. You've done. You've gone as far as you can. You can take a look around you and you see. Well, human beings have developed their mind way beyond their capacity to see through wisdom the outcome of their monkey mind's work. Now the spirit catches up. Now the spirit begins to guide the mind. And while brilliant inventions will come out of this, they will not be inventions that despoil your planet or bring harm to each other. And those inventions, discoveries that lie ahead have been there all along. But human being in imperfection, human being in conflict, human being guided and blinded by fear would never think of them. It is only when you recognize that what you do and what you accomplish as a human being must be for the whole interest of the human race. And the planet that gives that human birth, that whole new opportunities open up for you. Because you don't think of exploding things and destroying things in order to get ahead. Well, everything from the internal combustion engine to the rickety rockets that you send up uh, to, the, to the moon... <laughs> Uh, uh, that's all based upon explosion. Well, explode this. That'll give us power. Boom. Violence. Destruction. You must destroy the atom to create that power response. Well, my dear friends, as you grow into your maturity as a human race over the next millennium, but with its effects uh, being felt uh, now and increasingly uh, in the immediate uh, future, uh, when you realize that you don't have to create by destroying, then you will find, or among you, some will find how you can gain that kind of much, much greater power, efficiency, and so forth, by utilizing the universe as it exists, not dam damaging it, not diminishing it, but using it integrating yourself with the universal possibilities as you are integrating yourself within. So there are great wonders uh, uh, to come, and you'll be back to enjoy them and to uh, explore them. Uh, this is a difficult time, and there's no uh, getting around that. Uh, this is the time of the destruction, and this is the time of the uh, reconstruction. This is the time of death, and this is the time of birth. This is the time of enormously conflicting energies as the world dies and is reborn in one breath. And you are, of course, experiencing that. You will rise above it, but you won't be ignorant of it. You won't be unaffected by it. If someone would uh, push the, uh, the uh, button there. The third button. So, 
this is all sounds wonderful, it sounds grand, and it sounds exciting, and it is exciting. How it affects you in your day-to-day -day life is more to the point. Your life, each and every one of you, your life isn't perfect. There's good parts, there's bad parts, parts of your life you feel comfortable in, parts of it you're uncomfortable with. Uh, by and large, uh, you haven't reached the goals that uh, that you have uh, set for yourself. Uh, often you uh, question uh, even the reality or necessity of those goals or whether they're, uh, they are do indeed represent what you really want and really require. The reinvention of self happens a page at a time, a moment at a time. It happens not through your sitting down and constructing a grand plan, and then following that map, it exists by your trusting yourself and the fact that a plan exists that is perfect for you, and enacting so that you can bring that plan to life a moment at a time, a day at a time, an action at a time, without impatience, recognizing that all goals will be reached. It is impatience more than anything else, aside from self-doubt, that trips you up. Trying to get there quick. To get all the unpleasant stuff over, to get to the, the, uh, the dessert. And so you need to operate with a different rhythm than often you have operated with in life. By moving at a pace that is reasonable and not always looking down the road, for the next stop, you will be living a much easier life, <coughs> having taken the gun from your head and saying, I'm not only going to stop to smell the roses along the way, I'm going to explore everything I see along the way that interests me. I don't want to go in a straight line. I don't need to go in a straight line. I will meander and find my adventures wherever they are. I will allow my perfection to arise from who I am. What I truly need and what I truly desire are imprinted within me. At this stage, you don't need to consciously know. You need the excitement, the satisfaction, and the confirmation of revealing your new life to you, your complete nature to you, a bit at a time, emerging into your wholeness. If you are not happy in your work, if you are frustrated, if you are plagued by this or that limitation that may be inherent in the work itself, if you are not feeling good about that, you need to make changes. You are not going to feel good until the changes are made. One of the things that this process does for you is make it absolutely intolerable to put up with things that don't bring you the blessings of joy and accomplishment and satisfaction. You've been taught, you as human beings have been taught throughout history to put up with. Because what was your main goal? Survival. If I'm going to survive, I'll just have to put up with this condition. I'll have to put up with this person. I'll have to do the best I can within all of these limitations. And that made uh, for very frustrating lives. Now that is no longer the case. And you better recognize it right away or you'll make yourself very unhappy. You better recognize that you need, it's not an option, you need to change your lives, your jobs, your relationships, your environment, until it brings satisfaction to you. Now, I am not saying, as I've already pointed out, quit your job, leave your husband or wife or, or lover, and, uh, and uh, move away. You may wind up doing all of those things. 
but take this all a step at a time. What oppresses you most? What is least satisfying to you? Not in, uh, So you don't look at these options in terms of what's the easiest or what's the hardest, but what's the most annoying, what's the most limiting, what is the most self-denying area of my life, and what can I do to change it? Now you come to the question, what can I do to change it? And you come into contact with all of those old fear conditions. Say, well, I'm afraid to change it. What I really would like to do is fill in the blank. What I would really like to do is that, but I, I, I don't think I, I'm really not talented enough for it. I don't have the proper education and training to do that. I mean, I'd love to do it. I really would. And I always have wanted to do that. But, but uh, And it doesn't bring enough uh, money in. So I don't, uh, it just doesn't look like a, a real, so what's the next best uh, thing? No, stop, stop right there. Stop right there. Don't be influenced by old ideas of limitation. You're not alone. You are in partnership with the universe. You are in partnership with the timing of the universe. You will not choose situations that will cause you damage. So forget the whole concept that if I do this, then this horrible thing will happen. Or my mother will never talk to me again. Uh, or my father will be furious. Uh, or my kids will be angry. Or my husband or my wife. That's why you have to do this a, a little nibble at a time. You wind up all alone. <laughs> you need to make the choices as they come. Basically recognizing I am going to recreate my life until it fits me. And I'm going to do it a little bit at a time. I'm not going to buy a new suit. I'm going to sew a new suit. I'm going to put the buttons on. And I'm going to turn the cuffs. And I'm going to do all of the work step by step by step. Because I don't know right now what I want that suit to look like. But as I move forward, that design will emerge and it will fit me perfectly. Not based on what I think I want the future to be, but what I know I want the present to be. So take all the fearful what-ifs. What if I fail? What if my husband leaves me? What if I don't have enough money? What if, what if, what if, what if? Because they're all fear-inspired, and they're all old memories, and you're not limited by them anymore. But as I say, at this stage, you've got to prove that to yourself. And it's a scary process at first. But it gets so much less scary each time you make one of these little changes, each time you sew a piece of that suit, that it gets easier and easier and easier. And finally, as I say, it's spontaneous. And you are truly living the life of freedom, not having to worry or think about anything. Does that sound too good to be true? It isn't. It's what you were designed to be. You weren't designed to suffer forever. You suffered while you were at war with yourself, while you were at war with your fellow human beings, while you were at war with your environment. That causes the suffering. Now you are coming into harmony with all positive elements of your life. And because you have eliminated the negative from your thinking and from your life, you have moved out of the darkness into the light where no shadow can live. Because you have made those choices, you can't lose. You can't lose. What a concept! You've been trained to believe not only that you can lose, but you almost certainly will lose if you don't follow the most cautious, socially approved, parentally approved actions. Not true. Now, I'm not going to say that every choice you make is going to alienate people, but I think you need to be prepared 
for when that does happen. The people that truly love you, love without control, love without personal desire, the people, people who truly love you will support you through this whole process. Maybe it in the back, but they will support you. And those who don't no longer belong in your life. They can't deal with that change if they're not experiencing it themselves. Slaves hate free people. <laughs> How dare you be free? How dare you make these decisions? What, do you just want to have fun? Life is duty, life is work, life is suffering. Well, fine, you, you do your du duty and, and work at something unpleasant and suffer as much as you like until you get the light. But I'm not going to do that anymore. I wasn't meant to suffer forever. I haven't gone through willingly, if sometimes grumblingly, this process of death and rebirth and facing my fears and letting them go and this whole thing to stay the same. Now, when each of you began this process, however long ago it was, you had certain ideas about how it was going to be. And generally, uh, you thought, well, it's going to be wonderful. I'm just going to change my mind about everything and everything's going to be sweetness and light and, and, life, will be, and life will be swell. And you've learned since then that... Uh, that this change, uh, the entering into death, the entering willingly, entering into the darkness, inviting all your fears, come plague me, plague me, I'm going to blow on you and you're going to disappear because you are illusion. That's scary stuff. It takes a very courage courageous, very highly developed spirit to be able to take on that task. And you have done it so that you can reach this point. And to have other people's fears block you now would be silly beyond imagining. So take a look at that job. Take a look at that relationship. Can it be mended? Can it be improved? Or must it be thrown out with the trash? These are major questions. And your answer, the answer is clear within you. You see, the spirit not bound by time not bound by the limitations of understanding and communication that the rest of you is, knows the truth, the single truth, not opinion, not hope, not desire, truth. And so by listening to yourself, first that inaudible self that you respond to by faith, and then gradually integrating until you are one with that spiritual knowledge, you will create perfectly for yourself. Again, this isn't selfish. Those who are also emerging into the light will only be enhanced by any changes you make. Those who, for whatever reason, have made other choices and have other purposes for this life will fall away from you because shadow cannot live in the light. They will be miserable with you, working with you, playing with you, loving with you. They'll be miserable because they're not in the same place of emerging consciousness. Your awareness has simply grown too much. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. The life that you're going to create, of course, it doesn't live in a vacuum. As time goes forth, not only will you be drawing into your orbit, into your life, those who are also coming alive, also being reborn, but you will, uh, that entire process will be spreading gradually throughout humanity. So if you were to, uh, to live as little as another uh, 20 uh, years or so, you're going to be in a world considerably different, a world that's going to need a lot of building and a lot of time for development, but in which the consciousness is far different than now. Uh, as I've said before, time and events are telescoping now. Time itself is moving with greater rapidity, but so are the clocks, so you don't notice except thinking, 
I don't seem to have as much time to do things as I used to. I seem to be surrounded on all sides by needing to do this and this and this. And you look in the newspapers and, and you watch the television. Everything seems to be happening faster and faster. World going to hell in a handbasket on one side. <coughs> the most obvious side at this point. But gradually, as this telescoping effect takes place, what it, is, what it has to do with is first the stretching of the polarity of light and dark the duality that you've been living in throughout your human history until it is stretched to the breaking point so that which remains dark sails off in another direction from you and that which joins the light well shadow can't live in light so that illuminates and so as this process continues it seems faster and faster more and more intense more and more stress fear going wild the dinosaurs are dying, and their death throes are noisy and violent. The old civilization, the old structure, is collapsing. And collapsing and at, at, at an accelerated rate. So within this decade, you will see most of the collapse, most of the destruction taking place. But it isn't destruction, destruction, destruction till nothing's left and then rebuilding. Because at the same time that that darkness is swelling, so is the light. Less noticed now. But building. Building within you and you and you and all of you. And many more who are coming awake every day. And joining together on a psychic spiritual level and then on a material level, building a new society based upon newly perceived realities. And that's going to be, after this century, gradually becoming the emphasis on what is being built, what is being created, not where it is now, it's what is being destroyed. So that takes the spotlight for a relatively short time. You would think that a process like that could, could take uh, half a millennium. But not so. Human beings have been building toward this destruction for a long time. And it is in this century that you are ending now that it has reached its apogee. Both the development of the human mind and its creations, largely destructive or used for destructive purposes, that is the flowering of the Piscean Age, the time in which you have been given the freedom to develop your mind, unbalanced by spiritual wisdom and knowledge, darkened by fears, suspicions, etc., etc. So that's, uh, that's uh, the whole century. Take a look at it. Uh, it's all been about death. It's all been about death. The most horrendous wars. More people have died in war during the 20th century than in all of previous human history. Disease. Well, there used to be terrible diseases, but the population was a lot smaller too. And you haven't seen nothing yet in terms of the toll that disease is going to take, because disease is the physical manifestation of fear. And as fear grows, so does this ease. 20th century has been about death. Now you're in the last tenth of it. You are the harbingers of light. A little candle here, a little candle here, a little candle there, the Holocaust everywhere else. But gradually, that changes. Finally, the old building is torn down. And the quieter, more peaceful job of building takes its place. You've chosen to be born into exciting times. So don't complain. <laughs> because your lives are going to be nothing but improving. And as this process continues, you will be that eagle. Free. Flying above 
the disasters and the quicksand that others will be falling into. And you are the future. There are a lot of people who aren't aware of the spiritual implications of what is going on are very, very depressed. <coughs> the world is coming to an end. How can things get worse without total destruction? Well, they're quite right. They're quite right. But at the same time, as their attention is taken by this destruction that's going on, at the same time, the reconstruction is already building. Death and rebirth, the transformation for humanity, the transformation that has taken place in you individually as pioneers, as harbingers of the light of the future, is taking place in humanity as a whole. And soon the death will be forgotten and the birth celebrated. In the meantime, you have all that you need within you and supported and confirmed by your friends to bring yourselves to manifest, to create perfect personal freedom. Now we'll open for questions. I have one question on freedom. I have uh, read and understood that, that freedom is based on discipline, that, uh, that the mind needs to be controlled, and the only real way to control that mind is through meditation. All right. In the first place, discipline is, uh, is fine when you're living in a world of duality. Uh, when you're surrounded by uh, the temptation, uh, all sorts of temptations. Discipline isn't really necessary as you grow into your wholeness because you're not disciplining yourself. When you're disciplining yourself, you're disciplining yourself uh, not to do this or that, uh, not to be lazy, uh, not to be selfish, not to be this, not to be that, not to be the other thing, to focus on step at a time uh, uh, development of, in a certain direction. But when you are whole, when the darkness is cleansed away from you. It doesn't require self-discipline. It doesn't require anything like uh, like that in order to become yourself, because you are becoming what you are in your nature, which is godlike, which does not demand discipline. God does not need discipline to behave like a god. You do not need discipline to become a perfect human being in God's image. What you need is to release the fears that have plagued, haunted you, limited you, tempted you uh, from becoming what you can become. Now, in terms of meditation, uh, at this point, I recommend uh, meditation. It's not uh, vital, but it's, it's helpful. It's very helpful in, uh, in helping to open the door of communication, which is, which is only open a crack now, it's opening a bit more, a bit more. But to open that door in a meditative uh, state, to be able to connect with spirit, the language of spirit, and the understanding of spirit, uh, that is at this point held by meditation. But the expansion of your consciousness that comes from spirit indwelling flesh and mind, body, mind, spirit, wholeness, means that when that takes place, when spirit fills everything, your consciousness expands, literally expands, to a point where what you find now in meditation, by saying, well, I have to leave this level of consciousness so that I can, uh, let's say, go into alpha rhythm consciousness and, and expand my understanding and my communication, that will be an intrinsic part of you. Uh, that's what I was saying earlier, that, uh, that as you move forward into this process of integration of the three selves, that your uh, consciousness expands to such a point that you are automatically responding to the voice of intuition, which is what you connect with in a meditative state, uh, without even thinking about it. Oh, this is a complex one. I've been working uh, on relieving myself of fear of authority, fear of God, fear of father figures, uh, big time recently, <laughs> for, for years, but really especially recently. And, um, and also really questioning um, what I want in relationship. And I really 
I've even been questioning whether I want to have a soulmate man in my life. And I think the answer really came out yes, but I also don't know if I trust myself yet enough to, to even ask for that. In um, the first place, it's unlikely to happen yet. Uh, because you're no law, you are not yet uh, you aware enough of who you are becoming to send out the right signals and have them be responded to uh, by the right individual. Uh, it is likely that that will develop because it is your choice, and whatever is your choice will develop. Uh, at this point, you may say, "Well, I'm not sure. Maybe uh, I'd like to. Well, I think I would like to, but uh, I don't know, uh, and certainly not now." And, well, that's fine, that's fine, uh, because it's going to happen. The mind can chase it around and nibble at it and worry it and, and uh, wonder this and that. But you have created a life and a reality by your own process that will not limit you in anything you truly desire. You will desire only that which is perfect for you, and you will re receive that. Now, um, that was the first part of the question. Well, I don't know if I was very clear in even asking, but what you said is helpful. I'm, I'm just going through a lot of uh, relieving of fears of, of <coughs> old angry pictures of God and father authority figures and that sort of thing. Yes, and you'll continue to do that. Uh, it's, it'll become uh, less worrisome very rapidly. Uh, because you've eliminated the roots. Now, the plant may still be standing, but it's dying anyway. And uh, and so you'll deal with those symptoms that still remain, the memories uh, uh, that are still a part of you. But their roots are already dead. You killed them when you faced those fearsome issues. Now you need to decide, well, what does that mean? How do I, how do I respond uh, to it? Uh, am I still fearful of authority? Am I still fearful of men? Well, you're absolutely right to be fearful of negative authority, to be fearful of men who would bring unhappiness into your life. And if that has been your experience, that is still going to be your first reaction. But that's only a sort of knee-jerk reaction based upon the past. And that's really where faith comes in. You say, well, how do I know that that's over? Well, you won't know it by sitting alone by the telephone. You will know it by taking an active part in your life and trusting that when that particular need needs to be answered, it will be, and that when, by the time that it is answered, you will have already resolved the blocking issues of the memory of the father image and the, uh, the authority figure. Uh, so it's already taking place. Really, uh, the mind, the ego mind, really needs to be transcended during this period of time because it's so bewildered. I would qu uh, question whether there was anyone in this room who was not very confused uh, right now and has been conf uh, feeling that confusion more and more over the last uh, few months. But as I've said before, there's no one as confused as a newborn baby. What on earth is this? And, uh, and what does it all mean? Well, you're in like position. And in your process, as your process continues, the, many of the questions that you're asking now will pass, and uh, pass unanswered because they no longer require answers. Um, the mind has a tough time trying to deal with this new dimension. The mind, uh, uh, as a part of the physical form that lives for only a few years and passes on, uh, the mind is not capable in its original form of understand, truly understanding the concepts of eternal life and the concepts of true wisdom and spiritual understanding. As you integrate spirit with mind, mind becomes animated by spirit, therefore transcending human limitations. Now, I, when the physical uh, aspect dies, of course, the mind dies with it. But in the meantime, it can become a much more useful tool. But right now, it's bewildered. It is impossible for you not to do some worrying, thinking, planning, because you're, it's so ingrained into you. What I say to you is limited as much as you can. If you find yourself going around in circles in your mind, saying, well, 
if this, this, if this, this, and, uh, and there's no way for the mind to really figure it out at this point, uh, then do something else. Uh, either meditate or, or go uh, watch television, read a book, play with the child. Uh, do something else that takes your mind off of these major questions because they will answer themselves. You are learning to live existentially. You are learning to live in the only reality that there is on earth, which is the reality of the moment. And it takes the mind a, a while to be retrained, to be able to live in the moment. Uh, remember, the mind's goal throughout human history has been survival. And for survival, you need to be constantly anticipating the, the uh, possibility of disastrous events in the future. And uh, when you live in trust and in faith and in recognition that your future is in the mind of God and in your heart, you don't need to worry how it's all going to develop. Enjoy the trip instead of worrying if you're going to get to the station on time and if there'll be anyone there to meet you and uh, and so forth and so on. You follow me? Lotus, can you um, comment on the apparent energy rings or um, hieroglyphics or whatever in the grain um, in the wheat fields over in England? Do you have any knowledge of that? Oh, these uh, the circles, yes? Right. Well, let's take a look. And in the last end times, there will be signs and portents that most will not understand, that will appear to be inexplicable, that will appear to be outside the boundaries of human comprehension. For those lost in fear, these will be fearsome events. What can it mean? With the anticipation, of course, that it doesn't mean anything good. For those who are awakening, there is the delight and wonderment that accompanies these apparently inexplicable events. I said a long time ago, a number of years ago, you're going to be, as time moves forward, you're going to be thing, uh, seeing things that you won't believe. You're going to say, this can't be. This doesn't make any sense. This is outside of, uh, of, uh, of human understanding. This uh, is a conundrum. Uh, uh, this is a puzzle, a paradox. Uh, uh, and th as, as I indicated then, this is the time that this sort of thing is taking place. You're finding uh, scenes of human uh, bestiality uh, becoming uh, more common. Uh, you're finding, uh, uh, well, the, the, uh, an example in the recent past, of course, of these uh, amazing events of the Soviet Union in Eastern uh, Europe as something that could not be predicted, that happened apparently like lightning and uh, that left uh, everyone with their jaws uh, hanging open. Well, uh, people get used to things, and so now it doesn't seem so amazing and wonderful. But if you recall at the time, what a shock! Well, some of these events are of non-human origin. As I've said before, there are aliens among you, and uh, there are uh, other life forms uh, watching this, uh, this dramatic unfoldment of events. Whenever a new race uh, goes through that process of, uh, of transformation, uh, the universe uh, watches and applauds and encourages and helps and so forth, uh, because the universe is not full of Darth Vader's, you see. The universe is not evil. Uh, uh, those who... Uh, uh, the first signal you give is when you start reaching out to planets and you pop, pop, pop out to your, out to your uh, little moon. And... Uh, <laughs> And that's, uh, and that's noticed, and, uh, and they say, well, they're getting ready. Uh, they're getting ready. And so uh, there's an, att an, an attendance uh, to that. Uh, that's sort of a dead giveaway, because it's natural and human. Throughout human history, the wonderment of the skies and, uh, and uh, trying to identify what are those uh, lights out there and what do they mean. Well, as, you, as the human, in this case, as the human mind uh, uh, grows in its understanding and in its ability to, uh, to look far, uh, 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 then, then it uh, becomes irresistible to create some kind of contraption that will get you out there. First to look out there and then to get you physically uh, out there. Um, and uh, uh, that's a, one of the signals that it's time for uh, this process to accelerate and to, and to, uh, and to complete. 
And as I've indicated to you before, in the next century, uh, you're going to be uh, communicating directly with uh, those who do not uh, originate upon uh, this uh, planet. And, uh, and I want to say, uh, you know, humor is universal, uh, as joy is universal. And, uh, and uh, so uh, don't be surprised when I tell you that there are, uh, there's a bit of mischief involved in, in some of these uh, signs and wonders and portents, too. Uh, uh, they need to be there for the purpose of, uh, of uh, puzzling uh, some and uh, frightening some and enlightening others. Uh, but uh, I will say to you uh, point blank, there's absolutely no purpose in these circles. <laughs> and uh, they might as well have been squares or pillars of fire or, uh, or whatever. And it's, uh, it's uh, I mean, you can imagine looking, uh, uh, looking down figuratively and, uh, and saying, oh, uh, uh, look at them all with their jaws hanging open, saying, what on earth does this all mean? And, uh, and all of the learned comment and scoffing and, uh, well, it's quite amusing. Um, so uh, this is simply one demonstration among many, many, many of the inexplicable that will all be explained uh, to everyone's satisfaction in the right time, but are serving a purpose now in announcing the, uh, the time that you are in. And you know, you look into your prophetic uh, books, and the, the Christian uh, Bible is certainly one of those, it's far from inerrant because it's been passed into human hands for uh, for alterations, uh, but uh, nonetheless contains uh, uh, a great deal of veiled, of course veiled, this is a mystery uh, that you're in, but uh, a veiled information uh, regarding what to look for when, uh, when the time for this uh, enormous rebirth uh, takes place, and you're, uh, you're seeing it. After this uh, thousand-year millennium, um, is the Earth going to continue producing uh, an enlightened race? Yes. Yes. There's no. Uh, uh, I, I discern no period at the end of the sentence that uh, it is uh, it is ongoing. Uh, I'm not going to get into the purposes beyond the millennium that you are entering. Uh, but uh, there will always uh, be spiritual purpose. And I've indicated to you before that uh, humanity eventually will become a teaching race, and uh, as others have, uh, other races have before you. And uh, uh, there's a progress, you see, for the human being in flesh as there is for the human soul in the spirit, and uh, an evolution and ongoing uh, uh, needs and uh, that develop. Each uh, step that you take implies within it the step beyond. And so as you learn the lessons in this, uh, in, what, in the time that is passing now, as you've learned the lessons of the mind, uh, what the mind, the wonders it can perfor perform, the d disasters it can create, uh, out of that emerges the necessity for the unification of body, mind, and spirit, so that you can progress, so that there can be, so the evolution can continue. Now, you, as individual spirits, uh, will uh, are coming increasingly into a time. You see, you've been choosing your lives, looking at it historically, looking at it within the context of time. You've been uh, choosing your lives based upon what you needed to learn to get from here to there and uh, taking as long uh, a time as you needed and as many lives as you needed to develop that, uh, that thesis and that understanding. Uh, but as you reach your wholeness now, your lives become much more voluntary. Uh, you may choose, for example, and you can liken it, I suppose, to, uh, to education on a human level, uh, that, as I indicated earlier, there isn't much freedom about what you're going to study as, when you're a grade school student. There's slightly more freedom when you are a high school student there's gradually increasing freedom when you are a college student. And when you are a graduate student, then you choose your own line of study. And there are no requirements except for that line of study. And so you may choose a specialty uh, that will uh, see you through uh, many lives until you've fully explored and developed yourself uh, in that specialty and then choose another and so forth. So uh, uh, so the lives that you choose in the time to come 
will be uh, largely, uh, well, will be entirely voluntary lives, expressing your freedom as free spirits, and uh, will uh, have to do with themes beyond the themes involved in the duality. Development well beyond what you can imagine now. And I don't like to go into it a, a great deal because what's happening now is so wonderful uh, that uh, there's no need to look into the next uh, step too, uh, too uh, thoroughly. Back again, um, I experienced an acceleration of my consciousness a few weeks ago, and I'd like a little explanation about it. Yes, well, there were trigger events, as there always are in the cosmos. Uh, uh, as is uh, generally known, the stars and the planets emit radiation, emit energy. Uh, this is an energetic universe. All matter is energy. And uh, as uh, certain kinds of energy are released, it's like a, uh, or let's liken it to a computer program where there are all sorts of elements. And when you change those elements, the result is different too. Uh, in the years that uh, we've been uh, involved uh, in this work, uh, we've uh, dealt with primarily with the eclipse triggers uh, that, uh, that have triggered releases of Christ energy and that have released uh, other kinds of energetic change. In these last few months, uh, particularly, as you say, within the last two months, there has been an acceleration of that process. Plus, as I said to you earlier, you know, if Christ energy was released all at once, you would have simply exploded. The Christ energy had to be released into you a drop at a time. Well, the first release, just a drop. Second release, well, you've adjusted and assimilated that drop of energy. So we'll give you a couple of drops, and then a teaspoonful, and a tablespoonful, and a cupful. But now, finally, and of course those releases of Christ energy into this duality on Earth have a dual effect. For those who are opening, learning, growing, accepting these challenges, it is a galvanizing, expanding effect. And uh, for others, the release of these energy is uh, these energies is frightening, and uh, and building the fear uh, level. So uh, uh, the uh, the recent uh, eclipse events, uh, particularly the uh, solar eclipse uh, in Cancer, had to do with releasing the negative aspect represented by the sign cancer. That has, uh, has to do with dependency. You cannot be free, you cannot be the eagle if you are dependent. And so all of you were influenced by that, and by many others. I can't get into the whole uh, complex of, uh, of energy releases that would go on too long, but... Uh, but that one particularly had a great deal to do with freeing you. Now, the initial experience is disruptive, inexplicable, stressful. But the outcome, and, and over weeks and over months, but not over years, the outcome is your full release from previous negative dependent conditions in your life. And they're going to vary as to what they are and how intense they are from person to person. But they will have that releasing effect upon all. So, uh, yes. Um, I've been getting this, these feelings, especially dreams, just before I wake up, that there's somebody um, like Mr. Wright that I'm really connecting with right now on a spiritual level. And that any day now, I could just meet him, and I'm really being coming unnerved by it. Like, I look for him everywhere, <laughs> in the bank, and the grocery store. And I just want to know if that's right. I mean, is he so close? All right, in the first place, I would say this to all of you. Pay very close attention to your dreams now. They're not going to all be meaningful, but a greater and greater percentage of them now are going to be meaningful if coded and symbolized communications from higher self. If you do not generally remember your dreams, then I suggest that you try programming yourself before you sleep and uh, telling yourself, I am going, in, particularly in a meditative state, uh, uh, would be best, programming yourself, I'm going to remember my dreams. 
uh, some have suggested drinking a lot of water before you go to bed, <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, so you'll wake up during the night and then uh, uh, allow the dreams, uh, don't reach out and grab them and try to pull them into view, but allow them to come into your consciousness. For you to remember them, they have to leave the dream state and enter into the memory so they can be recorded. Uh, because you're going to be getting a lot of information. Now, you're not always going to be clear as to what that information means, but it, it will, perhaps only in series, you have a series of dreams, and then at the end of the series you think, well, now, wait a minute, those all seem to be linked, and what are the common characteristics, and blah, 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 and give the mind something useful to do in uh, in uh, in analyzing uh, those dreams and you're not going to be 100% right but you're going to be getting enough clues and enough clarity uh to uh so that they can help you now in this specific uh, uh, dream of yours it was a clear dream crisp and and immediate seemed real and uh, that's a dead giveaway for a meaningful dream it uh, it uh, is clearer uh, more crystallized uh, than other uh, less meaningful dreams. You can, it's fine to go looking, is it you, is it you, is it you? Uh, if you do that as a sort of game, as you say, could it be that uh, person, could it be this person, but not, uh, not with searching, yearning hope. Because trust the timing of your life and the intersection of that specific individual with your life at the appropriate time. Uh, so I'm certainly not going to say, well, just forget about it and let it happen, because that's impossible. Uh, uh, it's there for you to think about and be aware of. Uh, there are many things you can miss if you're looking in the wrong direction. You know, So to be alert about that, there's nothing wrong with that, as long as you don't uh, trouble yourself uh, with it. There should be no anxiety concerned uh, with it, because uh, it is coming. Now, it's not going to come... Uh, next year, two years, three years away, be pretty silly having a dream about it now when it was that far away. So, uh, 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 but also don't try to define too clearly what you expect the materialization to look like. Because you may well be looking in the wrong direction and creating the wrong description. So what you need will be what you get. What you truly desire is what you need. And that'll be what you get. But try not to imagine the detail. Uh, tall, dark, and handsome, uh, for example. They say, well, uh, yeah, I bet he's going to be tall, dark, and handsome. And you're going to miss that short blonde fellow that's meant for you. But that's a very rough uh, analogy, but that's, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's the thing. So, uh, uh, if you're get if you're getting uh, and you're uh, a present and it's beautifully wrapped and you think uh, oh there's going to be a wonderful uh, present in there and it's fun to look and speculate uh, on what uh, might be in there and even to give it a little shake or two but uh, let it be a surprise don't try to feel its form and uh, and uh, peek uh, through the wrapper to uh, to discern it <laughs> yes. Um, I'm in kind of a complicated situation, um, and I'm very frustrated. Um, about nine months ago, when my husband decided to just quit his job and take this leap of faith and try something new, and it hasn't seemed to like it's working out. In the last six months, have been especially with the new baby, it's been very stressful. And I keep saying, "Well, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, live day to day. I'm trying to keep a positive attitude. We're trying to keep our marriage together and everything going." And yet, I wonder. One, two things. Um, why? What's the karmic relationship between my husband and I? Our, our relationship and money. And two, when is it going to end? When is it going to get better? Are we going to have to go through the fire and really take some radical changes, or is it going to? There are uh, some radical. Um, <laughs> well, you know that's such a subjective term. Uh, there are going to be important changes, and uh, they're going to be taking place this fall, beginning in September. Uh, course corrections, I would call them, rather than uh, a complete turnabout. Um, uh, regarding, again, career, uh, which uh, from which emanates uh, these other uh, issues. 
uh, money. Um, have you ever seen a clown drop his hat, drop his top hat, and try to catch it, but each time he reaches for it, he kicks it a little farther along? And that's the image that uh, that I get uh, w- with your husband that he's done in the past is uh, is uh, is uh, in reaching, he also kicks it away so he can't get it. That's not going to last. What was important in his radical change that he already took, the leap of faith, uh, that's not going to be uh, to backfire on him. It, what was important is his taking that leap. Now. At the time, he, uh, because of timing and because of, uh, of degrees of understanding, uh, the leap was really a blind leap. It doesn't, uh, you know, when I recommend that you take a leap, it doesn't always mean that that specific leap is going to lead to the riches of the flesh or spirit uh, that you desire, but that it will be like a stepping stone across a pond that you can't get to the pond in one leap. You've got to take the stepping stones, and one's here, and one's over here, and one's here. And some of them are right next to each other, and some you have to jump for. But uh, you have to do it if you want to get across the pond or across the river. And uh, and that's more like it, that uh, the... Uh, oh, so many implications. If I was giving him a reading on this, I'd go into all the detail. But I uh, suffice it to say that there were many purposes, including the issue of self-belief and self-defeat, that had to be encountered after the leap. Issues between the two of you and issues within himself. Uh, It is my belief, based upon present indications, that the outcome will be uh, not only satisfying to you, but it will not be the end of uh, the marriage or uh, or so forth. And as far as going through the fire uh, goes, if it looks like it, uh, uh, it's really not going through the fire because you're not going to be singed uh, by it. You're not going to be defeated by it. Uh, steel, uh, metal has to go through the fire to become steel, to become strengthened, to enable it to do the work that it needs uh, to do. And human beings need to go through the fire too, not to be destroyed by it but to be uh, strengthened by it. And, and that's the purpose of this. And, and uh, as far as things writing themselves, uh, um, c- continue your process of living moment by moment and day to day, and uh, there will be an evolutionary uh, rather than revolutionary change, a course correction, that takes place uh, uh, during the fall. Um, in terms, I'm going to speak generally now, in terms of financial uh, questions, um, Try not to base your financial desires or expectations upon the past. The present and the future are far different things, and everything, uh, as Mr. Einstein pointed out, is relative. And uh, what I will say to you, and say to you all, is that you will be taken care of. You will not suffer deprivation. There is a bargain here that you are one party to, and the other party is going to see to it uh, uh, that after all of your faith and dedication, uh, it's not a it's not a bad joke, and you're not going to fail. You will be taken care of for all your needs, and that doesn't mean just bare survival, because that's not what this is about. Uh, all of your needs will be attended to, not, not with your passivity, but with your cooperation with the process as it unfolds. And uh, so, uh, in general, the world today, among uh, the things that are falling apart and collapsing, is the international financial system. Uh, it is uh, it is falling apart because it is based on imbalance and upon fear and upon persecution and, and upon all sorts of uh, negative things. And in the emerging light of the change of the times, it can't survive. And as it collapses, of course, it's going to cause enormous, is already and will continue to cause enormous disruption. But it doesn't mean the death of everybody. It doesn't mean everybody going uh, broke. Uh, and uh, as I said, this is not the end of the world. It's the end of civilization as you know it. And there's a vast difference in those two phenomena. So uh, for you, I would say all of you who are in this process, uh, you will be taken care of however disrupted the general circumstances become. But do not apply old uh, uh, wishes and and dreams of uh, of vast wealth. It's going to be a very rare person uh, 
who, uh, who gets involved in vast wealth, primarily because the things that you're learning and what you are growing into have to do with true joy and true values. And uh, vast wealth, uh, even comparatively vast wealth, in a world uh, that is uh, starving and dying is not appropriate. So uh, trust the process. Focus on the steps that you are taking, not on the outcome. You're going to be fine. You're all going to be fine. But you're going to cause yourself needless anxiety if you try to do the steering when you can sit back and enjoy the ride. When you can take the action as it approaches, you don't have to plan the journey in advance.